Hello everybody, I'm here to explain to you the Gypsy Jazz right hand rest stroke technique. I had the experience of learning this later in life. So I was already a professional electric guitar player by the time I started picking up this style and I had a problem. When I was playing my usual electric technique on this guitar, it sounded like nothing, like ants running on the fretboard. I, had, I played so light, so close to the strings with a flat wrist. I, it was clear to me that I was not getting the sound. So how do you get the sound? That's the real question. First of all, you realize that Gypsy Jazz is played exclusively sitting down. You never wear a strap, you never stand up. So a lot of the electric kind of angles that you use don't apply here. The main thing is that your left hand should be free from carrying the weight of the neck. If I let go of my right hand, the guitar is going to fall that way, right? It's sort of not balanced. Most of these guitars are neck heavy. So you really want to be stabilizing the guitar using this triangle right here. So what I'm really doing, there's this angle where I hold my elbow and my bicep, and really it's pressure coming down from my bicep into the top of my thigh. And that's what's in charge of putting the guitar in place. And there's also a space you can see here between my body and the guitar. Uh, I don't know if you can see it, I'll turn a little bit, right? So there's really, sort of, I don't know, a few inches of space. I'm not, I'm not trying to touch the back of the guitar because it dampens it a little bit and also it puts everything in the right place. Now, other than stabilizing it, the other thing that it does is it determines the placement of my right hand. You want to be sort of close to the bridge. A big mistake that I see a lot of aspiring gypsy jazz players make is uh, on guitars with a sound hole. This obviously doesn't have one they play over the sound hole or they play closer to the fretboard, like here. And with a lot of different types of, of right hand techniques, your hand naturally is sort of above where your neck pickup would be. Now in gypsy jazz, if you hold the guitar correctly, meaning if your arm is back far enough, then your hand will naturally be sort of in this area, right? On guitars with a sound hole, it's sort of half the distance between the bridge and the sound hole, so it's here. You don't want to be right by the bridge, you'll get too thin and oriental of a sound, but you also don't want to be right above the sound hole or really close to where the neck pickup would be, because then you, first of all, the, the, the strings are going to feel very noodly, and you're going to get too flubby of an attack. So right here is a great place to aim, and you don't if you're trying to drag your hand back to get there, as opposed to just adjust your arm, you're not going to get there gracefully. So that's sort of first big mistake I see. The other one has to do with how you hold the actual pick. Now, when you are gripping the pick, there are a few big schools of thought on how you should grab a pick. The Benson way, which is tip of the thumb to the flesh of the index. There's the Matheny way, rotate the pick around, three finger grip. And then there's the most common way, which is also the Gypsy Jazz way, which is the side of the index finger, right? The top side of the index finger. It's sort of a thing I always like to do is try to balance the pick just there and close the thumb around it, right? And this is sort of the best grip for this style of music because it allows you to get your wrist up in the air. Now the motion is a motion of putting out a match. That's the motion, you put out the match. You don't turn the ignition, you put out the match. And you don't wanna force this motion. It's a rotation of this arm bone with a very loose wrist. The moment you start locking up, is the moment this whole thing starts feeling really bad. Um, now, 
There are two styles or two skill sets that are sort of separate in the gypsy jazz world. There's the rhythm playing, which is sort of a strumming style. They call it la palm. And then there's the single line kind of style, which is, you know, how I solo, how Django, all these people solo, and that's the rest strokes. Now we're gonna focus on the rest strokes for a minute. First of all, what is a rest stroke? Just like in classical music where you can play rest strokes with your thumb or your index finger, basically what you're doing is you're playing through the string and ending up resting on the next string, right? Now, I guess unlike classical music, the wind of the motion is much higher. So when you're playing this kind of rest stroke, the question is where do you start the motion from? So you gotta imagine that your wrist is sort of spring-loaded, right? And even if you just lift, like kind of with this rotation, just lift your wrist up, you will notice that you are putting a lot of pressure right now on your left hand, and the moment you take it down, this happens. So it's this fling that you're trying to go over. It's this unnatural winding up, that's where the tension is, and then gravity taking it down. So you gotta harvest that energy and then cut through the string in one foul swoop and land on the adjacent string under it. That metallic clank is what it's all about. motion now the high E string is the exception because you don't have a place to rest on so you just approximate this is why all these guitars have these beauty marks it's pretty unavoidable right you you will crash into the surface of the guitar occasionally uh, you don't want to do that but it will just happen but that's the motion and that's one of the three strokes that exists in gypsy jazz. There are only three right hand strokes. So the first one is that rest stroke, and that's the most important one. And when people play ballads and play slow, it tends to be almost exclusively rest strokes, right? I played all rest strokes there, no upstrokes. Second one is an upstroke. Now an upstroke in gypsy jazz is just a reaction to a rest strokes. And that's why you never start on upstrokes. You can't just, you cannot get to the string with an upstroke or you cannot get to the string ready to play an upstroke without a rest stroke preceding it. Even licks that start on upstrokes in gypsy jazz follow a ghosted rest stroke. So, like, you might have like a... So I played some sort of downstroke and then I'm here ready for that upstroke. You see, but I was already in that position, ready for that reaction. Now this would be a great time to talk about the angle of the pick. So the pick is completely parallel to the string but the forward slant, the forward slant is what it's all about in this style. If you don't have a forward slant, you're not gonna be able to land your rest strokes and you're not gonna be able to play your up strokes because what the forward slant allows me to do is to make the up strokes go up in the air as opposed to slam into the next string. If I played without a forward slant after a rest stroke, if I tried to play an upstroke, I would cut back through the next string, or I would play some sort of rested upstroke. I don't want to do that. The rest stroke is only a downstroke thing. The upstrokes create a semicircular motion away from the guitar that gets me in place for another rest stroke. So when I'm here, I'm basically free to now land on whatever string I want. So in a way, if I'm playing, let's say, a note on the B string, an upstroke on the B string, then I'm ready to crash down back on the low E string. Right, it's not a problem. 
I'm free to land wherever I want as long as I am in that post upstroke space, right? So I play an upstroke, cut through the string, it's a big motion, and then I'm here above the guitar, ready to slam back down. So that's two of the motions. I have a rest stroke, I have an upstroke. What's the third? The third motion is the whip. Now the whipping motion, I heard some people refer to it as the half rest stroke. And it's sort of like this, like you whip something and then you jump back up. So I, I like to think about it like whipping my wrist down and pulling my elbow up, right? At the same time. I get basically back up to that post upstroke away from the guitar space. You can think about it as the motion of a down and an up together, right? I have down, up, down, up, down, it's like down, up, right? But you just, you just play the down stroke. You don't catch the string on the way up. It's not, it's not the dim, it's. So I'm just playing a down stroke and then I just go straight up in the air. Now, why is that important? The rule of gypsy jazz picking is that whenever you change strings, you start with a downstroke. That's for an important reason because of that forward slant of the pick. Now, that means that if I'm playing one note per string ascending, it's what you call a sweep, down, 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 down. And if you play it descending, then it's all whips because you cannot get in place to play another rest stroke unless you're above the guitar. So it's not rest, 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 rest. You'd never be able to do that. It's so rest, 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 whip, 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 right? Licks like this. Just rest, 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 whip, whip, whip. See, three rests, three whips. So that's all over gypsy jazz. Also the three notes per string, going up, economy picking, meaning rest, up, rest, and then another rest. But going the other way, it would be rest, up, whip. because that whipping motion gets me to jump the string and gets me ready to slam another rest stroke into the string that's above. If I take a classic Django lick and I break down what happened there, I played a rest stroke, hammer on pull off, down up, rest stroke, up stroke, and then that whip, rest stroke, up stroke, rest stroke. So if I play one note per string on the G string and three on the D, I have to do that. Right? The last thing I want to talk to you about is the mechanics of switching strings on the guitar playing rest strokes. When you're on one string, just alternating, it's just rest up, rest up, right? Even if you're playing lines. That whipping thing is just a tool to switch when you're switching strings going towards a thicker string, meaning closer to your nose, and you have an odd number of notes per string on any of them. So one, three, five, if I have five notes and then I need to switch, so it's gonna be rest up, rest up, and then whip, right? Let's say I have just three notes on one string, then two and two. Something like that. So it's rest up, whip, rest up, rest up. Something like that, just simple. Now, the last thing to think about is the mechanics of actually moving from string to string. So if I'm just alternating on one and I wanna to move to the next, I never open my wrist to get there. I don't do, I don't keep the elbow in one place. I actually move the arm bone. Imagine six positions and this being sort of, sort of mechanical lever that gets you from point A to point B. So this is your E string position, B string position, G string position, D. It's very subtle, right? 
Just imagine it like that. This part is sort of moving, getting you from point A to point B. Even when you're sweeping, you're never going like this. You're going like this when you're switching strings, right? And when you get to a string you want to play a line on, that's the idea, right? You're just always using this part of the arm for the switching and the wrist for alternating. So you're always using this arm bone, like a mechanical arm, to get from point A to point B on the guitar, right? Da -da 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 -da, across strings. And then when you get to a string you want to play on for a while, you just alternate on it, putting out the match. I hope this video helps. You got to sign up for our Patreon. There's a lot of exclusive content just for you there. But if you don't want to do that, just click that like button, subscribe, leave a comment, ring the bell, and we'll see you soon. Bye, everybody.